In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How God Distributes His Gifts Jesus promised He would not leave us orphans, but would send the Holy Spirit to guide and protect us. He gave the sacraments to heal, feed, and strengthen us. The seven sacraments, baptism, the Eucharist, penance, or confession, confirmation, holy orders, matrimony, and the anointing of the sick, are not just symbols. They are signs that actually convey God's grace and love. The sacraments were foreshadowed in the Old Testament by things that did not actually convey grace, but merely symbolized it. Circumcision, for example, prefigured baptism, and the Passover meal prefigured the Eucharist. When Christ came, he did not do away with symbols of God's grace. He supernaturalized them, energizing them with grace. He made them more than just symbols. God constantly uses material things to show his love and power. After all, matter is not evil. When he created the physical universe, everything God created was very good. He takes such delight in matter that he even dignified it through his own incarnation. During his earthly ministry, Jesus healed, fed, and strengthened people through humble elements such as mud, water, bread, oil, and wine. He could have performed his miracles directly, but he preferred to use material things to bestow his grace. In his first public miracle, Jesus turned water into wine at the request of his mother, Mary. He healed a blind man by rubbing mud on his eyes. He multiplied a few loaves and fish into a meal for thousands. He changed bread and wine into his own body and blood. Through the sacraments, he continues to heal, feed, and strengthen us. Baptism Because of original sin, we are born without grace in our souls, so there is no way for us to have fellowship with God. Jesus became man to bring us into union with his Father. He said no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is firstborn of water and spirit. This refers to baptism. Through baptism, we are born again, but on a spiritual level instead of a physical one. We are washed in the bath of rebirth. We are baptized into Christ's death and therefore share in his resurrection. Baptism cleanses us of sin and brings the Holy Spirit and its grace into our souls. And the Apostle Peter is perhaps the most blunt of all. 
Baptism now saves you. Baptism is the gateway into the church. Penance. Sometimes on our journey toward the heavenly promised land, we stumble and fall into sin. God is always ready to lift us up and restore us to grace-filled fellowship with him. He does this through the sacrament of penance, also known as confession. Jesus gave his apostles the power and authority to reconcile us to the Father. They received us and received Jesus' power to forgive sins when he breathed on them and said, Re Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Paul notes that all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors of Christ. God making his appeal through us. Through confession to a priest, God's minister, we have our sins forgiven, and we receive grace to help us resist future temptation. The Eucharist Once we become members of Christ's family, he does not let us go hungry, but feeds us with his own body and blood through the Eucharist. In the Old Testament, the Jews prepared for their journey into the wilderness. God commanded them to sacrifice a lamb and sprinkle its blood onto their doorposts so that the angel of death would pass by their homes when they ate the lamb to seal their covenant with God. The lamb prefigured Jesus. He is the real Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Through Jesus we enter into a new covenant with God who protects us from eternal death. God's Old Testament people ate the Passover lamb. Now we must eat the lamb that is the Eucharist. Jesus said, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. At the Last Supper, he took bread and wine and said, Take this, is my body. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. In this way, Jesus instituted the sacrament of the Eucharist, the sacrificial meal Catholics consume at each Mass. The Catholic Church teaches that the sacrifice of Christ on the cross occurred once and for all. It cannot be repeated. Christ does not die again during the Mass. But the very same sacrifice that occurred on Calvary is made present on the altar. That's why the Mass is not another sacrifice, but a participation in the same once-for-all 
sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Paul reminds us that the bread and wine really become, by a miracle of God's grace, the actual body and blood of Jesus. Anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body and eats and drinks judgment upon himself. After the consecration of the bread and wine, no bread or wine remains on the altar. Only Jesus himself, under the appearance of bread and wine, remains. Confirmation God strengthens our souls in another way through the sacrament of confirmation. Even though Jesus' disciples perceived grace before his resurrection, on Pentecost the Holy Spirit came to strengthen them with new graces for the difficult work ahead. Then they went out and preached and gospel, the gospel fearlessly, and carried out the mission Christ had given them. Later, they lay hands on others to strengthen them as well. Through confirmation, you too are also strengthened to meet the spiritual challenges in your life. Matrimony. Most people are called to the married life rather than to the religious life or life as a single person. Through the sacrament of matrimony, God gives us special graces to help married couples with life's difficulties, especially to help them raise their children as loving followers of Christ. Marriage always involves three parties, the bride, the groom, and God. When two Christians receive the sacrament of matrimony, God is with them, witnessing and blessing their marriage covenant. For Catholics, God does do this through the priest or deacon who presides at the wedding as the church's witness. A consummated sacramental marriage is a permanent, only death can break it, union. This holy union is a living symbol of the unbreakable relationship between Christ and his church. Holy Orders Orders are called to share specially in Christ's priesthood. In the Old Covenant, even though Israel was a kingdom of priests, the Lord called certain men to a special priestly ministry. In the New Covenant, even though Christians are a kingdom of priests, Jesus calls certain men to, to a special priestly ministry. This sacrament is called Holy Orders. Through it, priests are ordained and thus empowered to serve the church as pastors, teachers, and spiritual fathers who heal, feed, and strengthen God's people. Most importantly, through preaching and the administration of the sacraments. Anointing the Sick Priests care for us when we are physically ill. They do this through the sacrament known as the anointing of the sick. The Bible instructs us, Is any among you 
suffering. Let him pray. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil, in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick man. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Anointing of the sick not only helps us endure illnesses, it cleanses our souls and help us prepare to meet God.